Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.11. In this video I present my updated model of the SR-71 with newer textures and improved FAR compatibility. I still have not made the control surfaces and that includes the vertical stabilizers which are all moving and I also did not do anything with the landing gear, those are just stock landing gear. And I also have not made the engines, the engines are just advanced jet engines engines. So. Um, one thing that I had to modify was the size of them. By default, they're too small. So I just uh, scaled them up. And um, you'll have to go into configs if you want them this size. Otherwise, they'll be smaller. But they're the right type of engine. Uh, so you're looking for the J58 there. And so the parts I actually made are the body, uh, the wings, and the engine nacelles, engine pods, with the correct intake area. So they operate as intakes. You can use them for something else, but uh, I don't know actually how they attach unless they're on the attachment nodes. So basically, uh, the way it works is uh, the body has attachment nodes for the wing pieces. And so we hold Alt, click that, and then the engine pod goes on that attachment node. And then the outer wing piece goes like that. And then I put the control surfaces. Unfortunately, you can't do them in symmetry because this wing piece is different from that wing piece. And as a bonus, because of the way FAR works, FAR only reads lift from things on the negative side of the x-axis. I don't know why that is, but that's the thing I had to figure out from the last time I made this to make it more FAR compatible. So that means that any of the right pieces, so there's, uh, these are the pieces, and then so the right inner wing, uh, I had to make it on this side, this side of the x-axis. And then so in order to place it properly, you have to flip it over. And that's true of the right outer wing as well, it has to be flipped over to make it work. And that's just how it is. So the question is whether this can get to Mach 3. Now, well, there's actually another question whether we can lift off safely with a full load of propellant. Right now, it's fully loaded with propellant. This is close to its maximum takeoff weight. I suppose it can get some payload capacity. You can see the center of mass and center of lift right there. Our landing gear is very close to it, as it should be. And uh, I'm, I'm going to tuck it in a little bit. I don't know if that'll help the drag situation. But maybe I should lengthen it a little bit more just to avoid the tail scraping. It does look like the tail would scrape, doesn't it? Yeah, maybe I'll lengthen it and tuck it in more like that. And we'll see if it works now. We're a little bit heavier thanks to this tweak scaling though. Okay, a bit bouncy. Oh, maybe they're too far forward. Uh, oh. Nope, I'm pushing down on the stick and that seems to work <laughs> to push it down. Alright, um, uh, just a warning. Uh, there is no way for Kerbals to get out of this right now. So there's no hatch or anything. So that's important for Kerbal safety. And also the stock version, if you're using it in the stock, of course, delete the realism overall configuration, but it, um, it will be size smaller than real life then. Okay, ignition. And throttle up. And brakes off. Now we really have to be careful about, well first we have to be careful about going left to right because it tends to skid. And then we have to worry about the tail. At least I don't have to use nose wheel steering, it looks like the vertical stabilizers are enough. I'm going to try and pull up here. I am fully pulling up right now. Okay, now it's lifting the nose wheel. I don't want to scrape the tail. Uh, okay. Well, that's a ridiculously high velocity to be ascending at. 150 meters per second seem to be. So, 300 knots. That's crazy. We are full of fuel, so if it was a little bit lighter and under fueled it'd probably get off the ground faster. Well, let's cut down on the fuel consumption until we're higher up. Though maybe we want to lighten up after all. At least we verified that it can get off the ground with a full fuel load. 
The control surfaces are tricky to do. I would like to do them, but it might take some trial and error on that. Especially attaching them and making sure they actuate properly. Thing is, uh, previous attempts showed that while the left side control surface is attached just fine, the right side tended to be skewed, even when I used an attachment node, so... It's annoying. It doesn't look perfect, but it looks better, I think that's safe to say, because the first version I just made it flat black, it, I don't think it even had a bump map. It's using a lot of pitch authority right now. Well, we per should probably accelerate. We are so close to our stall speed right there. Let's see. Eh, we might as well pour it on, yeah. Once again, uh, FAR doesn't really have a way of identifying the wing thickness. It, it wants the mean cord, it wants the length of it, it wants the sweep. It doesn't really care about the thickness or the actual airfoil situation. I also don't know about body lift in Faramir space right now. So the body doesn't get any lift right now, which is probably a problem. And again, that's because, well, if it's only reading one side of the x-axis, I don't know what it's going to do if I add body lift to it. Seems a bit dangerous. Well, at least we can get past the sound barrier on an ascent. That's positive. And a turn. Oh, high dynamic pressure. We, we definitely don't want to be going down here. Come on. Hello. Come on. Well, now we seem to be in a better situation. Oh no, vertical speed is going down again. I think the whole business of trying to stay close to Cape Canaveral isn't going to work out. Let's just go to Miami. One valuable thing to remember on Ascent is to try and keep the flight status nominal and not in high dynamic pressure. We're sure using a lot of fuel though. There's definitely not an optimal Ascent. We're actually going to run out of Florida. <laughs> and I wasn't pointed at Miami at all anyway, it seems. Maybe we're fleeing to Cuba? I don't know. Or maybe we're doing a reconnaissance flight over Cuba. Hmm. Alright, Mach 2. Let's see if we can climb a little bit now. It's hard getting this thing to Mach 3. Obviously need to work on the lift. I could tell far that the wings are bigger than they really are, but then large wings also create drag. So, I mean, you can improve your lift, but you could also uh, create more drag like that. The body is probably the most important thing, but I haven't figured out how to fix that. Well, Mach 2.4. Still in high dynamic pressure though. Just after I said don't be in high dynamic pressure, here we are. It's actually increasing its fuel consumption. Oh, maybe that's because I'm in fizz warp though. Nope, it's increasing its fuel consumption. I don't know why it's consuming more fuel at higher altitude. Hmm. Now we certainly need to get to much higher altitude. We're approaching Mach 3 at least. But we're gonna have to... find a way to ascend here. We gotta pass right by Cuba on our way to Jamaica, I guess. Mach 3. Well, that's an improvement. Took a lot of fuel to get here though. 
Well, now the fuel consumption is going down because we're at a higher altitude. I'm pushing the throttle back up again. Maybe I should just ascend. I'm trying to keep above Mach 3, but that's probably... It's probably better to get out of this dynamic pressure. Ooh. Okay, well, maybe I shouldn't be in Fizz Warp for this. Well, now it says nominal. That's nice. I'll let it go down to Mach 2 and then flatten out. Wow, our p p pitch is maxed out there. Not good. Oh, and we're going down. Okay. It looks like uh, at this height we need to be going faster than Mach 2.4. Well, 20 kilometers and Mach 3.2 says nominal right now. Ah, uh, but it's going down. I don't think we can make it to 26 kilometers and still hold the speed. Technically, its max speed is Mach 3.32. But uh, I don't know if our parts currently obey that structural limit. I mean, that's a structural thing. Its engines could probably do... Well, they are doing more. <laughs> but... Oh, the engine temperature, though. Okay, well. Where are we actually going right now? Uh, well, it's Panama. We seem to be in a cycle where we have to go up and then go down again, go up and go down again. And we actually have to accelerate to faster than Mach 3.32 in order to get to our intended service ceiling. It's probably all due to lift. Anyway, I think we've gotten fast enough at least. We just can't get to the right height, or at least the service ceiling height, which is 85,000 feet or 26 kilometers. Alright, well, I'm gonna risk Val on trying to see how fast this can actually go right now. Again, suddenly it's reading an enormous amount of thrust and I don't know how that happens. And it's consuming the fuel commensurate with that. Not too sure that's right, but... These ramjet... I mean, it's a, it's a sort of a partial ramjet after all, so it's complicated. Mach 4.2 now. It's going all very ramjetty. Definitely, definitely ramjetty here. Oh, the... Oh, they've exploded. And wow, does the speed go down quickly when they're not on. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't think there's anywhere I can land in time. We're going to fall like a brick with this thing. Look how fast our speed went down. And how it's still going down even though I'm pitched down like this. We got off the runway at like 150 or something. I can't pull up right now. It's trying. Let me turn off atmospheric autopilot. SAS isn't doing anything better. Well, at least it did nose down. It could have just stalled out completely. Wow. Look how slow. I think it is slow, uh, stalled out. I guess it would be a bit nose heavy now because the engines are so heavy. I don't think it can pull up because it's just too nose heavy right now without the engines. Uh, I'm still shocked that we are have slowed down this much. Considering we're pointing directly downward. It's not like we're dropping like a feather here. Okay, this is not going to go well for Val. So, yeah, before she dies, with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.